Stucco, you have this extraordinary disco manifesto that you're releasing and you're kind of on book tour with it now. Mm. Um, it is sort of about disco, but not quite. So what is DISCO? DISCO stands for Distributed Cooperative Organizations. And they're a way for people to get together and work and create and distribute value in commons-oriented, feminist economics and peer-to-peer -peer ways. You don't get to do this at work very much, you know, to exercise this kind of like relationships. And they're also a critique of this kind of monster called the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or DAO. They're basically corporations or organizations that exist on the blockchain that can execute um, contracts, they can levy penalties, they can employ people. So the computer organizations that wield their own economic power. And because technology is far from neutral and it always follows the ideals of those who are investing in it, we're quite concerned about the deployment of these decentralized autonomous organizations. So we came up with the DISCO as an alternative which is cooperative and solidarity based. This came out of the lived experience of our, of our cooperative called the Guerrilla Media Collective, which started with a project based around translation and combining pro bono work and paid work. So we would do social and environmentally um, aware translations for someone like Ella, for example. But then we would also do client work and the uh, income that would come from our agency work would come back to compensate for the pro bono work. And we did this because volunteering, doing pro bono stuff is cool if you have the privilege to do it. But if you're a mother and you have five kids and you need to get to the end of the month, maybe you want to look into compensatory mechanisms so you can do valuable work. <coughs> so this was the guerrilla translation, guerrilla media collective story. But as we became, through our work in the P2P Foundation, aware of this world of the blockchain, etc., we said, well, we need a feminist reaction to this. And why we need that is it's a movement that talks a lot about decentralization but it doesn't really talk about decentralizing power mm. and this trifecta of hierarchy, which is capitalism, colonialism, and patriarchy. So how can we operate in the marketplace while articulating those values? Mickey, you've worked closely with the Ujima project in, in, yes. in Boston, where you're based, that is also trying to address this problem of um, investing and yes. where it comes from and where it doesn't go. Yes, well, one of the problems with um, investing is the vetting of course, and finding out all the underlying ties, et cetera. Um, if you're not really speaking today's language of technology, it's very hard to vet what technology you're going to invest in. And without consulting the community, you can't really build the technology they need. So right now, we're, we've ended up with a bunch of corporations that are tightly tied with in corrupt governments doing their bidding and feeding the information directly to the government. So without disengaging from that, there really is nowhere for us to go. So if you're making software differently, yes. how do you do it? We use free software that allows the people that use it to modify it, change it, sell it, do anything they want with it, when you're using a corporation's software, like a Facebook or whatever they build their platforms with, you cannot see into that and you cannot see what they're doing, which is, as Shoshana Zuboff is talking about now, surveillance capitalism, which in a nugget leads right down to predictive analysis. And now there is a bill that William Barr has put up to use predictive analysis to take our, pers our social media our doctor's records, combine them, and search for signs of mental illness. And then to As put us- defined by somebody. Yes, who we don't know who yet. And then to place us in observation against our will. How is this possible? <laughs> and hardly anyone knows about it. But these are platforms that are corrupt, that are all filtering info to the governments. I and highly recommend Shoshana Zubrov's Surveillance yes. Capitalism, if, if you haven't read it, people. Yes. Um, Ella, to you, you don't only work with artists, but you have worked for a long time in the artistic community in Berlin. How does that fit into this discussion? How does art and how do artists engage with the same question? Well, I, I've seen uh, quite a lot of my artistic friends moving uh, away from contemporary art and rather uh, diving into the world of activism. 
trying to apply artistic strategies to helping bring about social change. So I think that's something that is happening because also, I mean, the artistic world is subject to a colonization of people who have the money and the power to acquire arts. But uh, that also brought about a really interesting uh, movement of people applying all sorts of strategies. You work at the very prosaic level, though, of people's daily needs as well. And I understand you've been working on a project having to do with food delivery systems. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of automated food delivery now coming from companies like Amazon, or explicitly Amazon in the US. Is that a similar problem in Berlin? Yeah, it's. I, I think it's uh, starting to be a, a real problem everywhere. So a lot of these food delivery networks are owned by BlackRock, like the world's largest mm -hmm. investment company, right? So uh, no matter what are, you, what are you trying to build locally, in a sense, you need to compete against this company. But uh, what I think is super interesting, when uh, Deliveroo decided to pull out uh, of some European markets, there have been a bunch of writers who decided, uh, OK, so we are fed up anyways. We're going to start our own thing. So we will apply different ethics to what we do. We will, you know, we will create a platform co-op something that is owned by us, uh, something that allows us democratic control over what we do. So there's an interesting movement uh, emerging now in Europe. It's happening in Spain with Mensakas. It's happening in Berlin as well. And it's really interesting because um, this is not so much about taking a sole entrepreneurial decision about, OK, I'm, I'm starting a co-op or a company. But this, this has more of a shared effort because clearly, if a bunch of people is trying to build a sustainable food delivery network in a local sense, it's super, I mean, it's almost impossible to compete against the likes of, right. you know. So uh, this really requires a shared effort of municipalities, of activists, people who know how to build co-ops. It's super essential. The people who run the business, but also restaurants and potential partners to really build something that is a real alternative to the food delivery as we know it. And uh, I find it so interesting because these meetings, they feel different. This is not the startup situation, but this is really about creating multi-stakeholder models in cities and you know, helping to bring about a real shared effort because all these organizations will only exist if you all want them to be.